Well, welcome to House Seats Presents, your live look at entertainment. I'm your host, Bryce. We have Ann Martinez in here with us today. And a whole freaking slew of people out here. Take a look at this attractive audience we have out here. It's a lot. It is. This is the most we've ever had for the show. Hi, everybody. Hi, Cynthia. Hi, Tom out there. Woo! It is like a full house. They were here to see you. Oh, my God. Because we're doing a little... Alice through the looking glass today. So that's uh, courtesy of Jay up here. He's done all of this lovely. And we do have all this in our home. This is decorations in our actual home, you know, see. I we've like got our it. owl clocks. We've got our mushroom. Yeah. Mm. And we've got our tea set. So I thought we'd this have some nice. tea. You want to have some tea? Yeah. And by tea, I mean a shot. Should yeah. we start off with a shot? Here we go. I'm going to sip this one. We'll sip it. I know it hurts. Mm. It's a deep uh, burn. Ah, yeah, it does. Ah. Everybody out there have a shot? No one. Ha- they are, oh, they are. I think we're all alcoholics in the studio. The vast majority. Uh, the vast majority of us do it while we're doing our makeup, too. So, um, hi. Hi. This is your first time on the show. It is. But we have crossed paths many times with House Seats, with we House Seats have. Presents and all of our setless shows. Which I love. They're fantastic. And we have some coming up. We're going to talk about that. At the top of every show, we always do sort of a weekend roundup. And sort of what we've done, I know you've been in shows all weekend, because this one is a very busy girl. I'm going to tell you right now, she is in three shows right now on the Strip, Mm -hmm. as well as her own show, Alice, which we're going to talk about. So this weekend, we kind of did some really unusual stuff. Uh, We had some friends in town, or some friends who took us to San Diego. So we went to Omnia in San Diego. I didn't even know they had, you know, we have these massive nightclubs in Vegas. Yeah. And when we got to San Diego, I think we have a picture of the inside of Omnia. No. Oh, maybe oh. we don't. Oh, um, so awkward. It's, it is awkward, isn't it? It's strange. Can you describe it? We can. Uh, you know what it is. So in Vegas, these clubs are like massive. Mm-hmm. And when we pulled up in front of, there it is. Oh, oh. It's, it looks like that's that. so descriptive. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I that's feel my, like I'm there. That's my haphazard picture. Uh, we were at the DJ booth actually. Oh, it's, it's fine. so blue. Just use my photo, Scott. I loved it. It was a good moment. Mm. Um, no, you drive past it, and it almost looks wholesome. Because it's a little Aww. nice building on the street where people are just, you know, milling around. There's not a big line. Oh, no, Scott's coming over. I'm in trouble now. But um, inside, it's sassy. Inside, it's sassy and oh so classy. And we were there with the DJ. We were there with uh, Mayan and Shane. Oh. Yeah, it's a, it's a little DJ duo. So we were there. Then we went to Beauty and the Beast this weekend, too. We saw Aww, Beauty and the Beast at the fun. Smith Center. Such a beautiful production. It's a beautiful Such show. Such a beautiful. And then we know what we did last night, actually. We went to see The Jungle Book. I have to tell you that. Oh, was it good? It was amazing. I've heard it's awesome. Everyone must go to this And movie. I had my doubts. Oh, but no. But everyone says it's fabulous. It's, it's amazing. And this one wanted to take home all the animals from the show. I said, I don't think they're real. Oh, that's Because they don't, I don't think wolves, little cute baby wolves talk like that, but... Oh. I don't know. He was really excited about it, but it was a it was a beautiful movie. Oh, good. these live action Disney things are going to really just kick butt. Yeah, they're doing Peter Pan next. Yes, yes, because they did a pan. We need another Peter Pan movie, yeah, and they just stop at Hook. Like, let's just stop. I know there. Hook was good because that was the best. J- uh, Julia Roberts is Tinkerbell. Bang yeah, rang. That bang bang rang. Mm. We'll do another oh, shot real yeah, quick. Yeah, bang rang. All right, let's get into stuff here. Ah, oh Lordy, have mercy. So. <clears throat> Anne Martinez. Yes. When did you move to Las Vegas and why did you move to Las Vegas? I moved three years ago. Okay. Uh, because I'd been kind of checking out Vegas for a little bit. Yeah. Uh, my best friend Andy lives here. Mm-hmm. And he, when I had breaks from other contracts I was doing, I would come out and stay with him and his family. We, I kind of like do small projects, just kind of checking out the city. Mm-hmm. And then my husband got hired for Cirque to do O. So we were like, we got offered a bunch of different cities through Cirque, and we decided on Vegas. Wow. Yeah. Because, you know, we talk a lot about the show with every artist that comes in here, why they choose here. I'm born and raised here, and a lot of yeah. people, they've always thought, Vegas, Vegas, Vegas. I'm only going to be here for a short time. I'm only going to do this one show, and that's it. And once the show's over, I'm going to leave town. Yeah. And this sort of city grows on you, doesn't it? Well, I mean, I've always liked Vegas, and what I love about it is that we have the Strip, where there's always going to be entertainment. Yep. So you never have to worry. Even if a show closes, another one opens. Mm-hmm. But what I really love about it is <laughs> away from the strip, it's like a small town. I yeah. mean, they know us at our bank, at our grocery store. You can go hiking. You can go to the lake. It's a good place to live. Yeah. People just don't realize it. It's a little gem. I, I love that you just said that when one show closes, another one opens. It does. That's absolutely true. That's and if Vegas. you don't, well, you create your own. You, yes. So that's, that's, that's the beauty of that. And so... <laughs> You're right now, mm-hmm. uh, you, you're right now, you're in Showstoppers at the Win. Yes. Tell us about how you got that and that audition process for Showstoppers. Oh, it was intense. Yeah. Uh, Showstoppers, I got called in. They were looking for a female swing to swing all three vocalists. So it was an extensive four day ordeal mm-hmm. where um, I had to learn a lot of dance combinations and then sing a lot of music. 
And then uh, I didn't hear anything. And then they called me again, Mm -hmm. had me come in and sing. And that one was fast. I went in, sang a song. They had me do some scales on the piano and it downstairs got fitted. It was pretty quick. So. And who was in the, I I, I picture this theater, Mm -hmm. uh, the, the wind theater. I picture this theater space and all the producers and maybe even Steve Wynn watching this process in the dark. You can't even see. You can't even see. I mean, you go out, it's a very small, intimidating group, yes. but also very supportive. Sort of like this group right here. Yeah. 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 Totally. Intimidating but they're very people. sweet yeah. and they, um, they're very specific about what they are looking for, what they want. Yeah. And I, I enjoy, uh, notes and directions. So it was fun for me. And, uh, yeah, they're, they're good. They're very good to me. I, it's a constant process. I rehearse mm-hmm. every week. Yeah. And I go in every week. So it's, you're just constantly working, perfecting every little moment because, you know, Steve Wynn, it's, it's his baby mm-hmm. and he's worked very hard to make a show that is so elegant and beautiful in yeah. Vegas. And he really appreciates that old school musical theater, that yeah. beautiful time where we had Hello Dolly and Cabaret, these really beautiful shows. And he's really preserving that and creating it in a new way. Yeah. So Whatever he wants, you know, is is what we do. Well, no, and that's cool because we were talking top of show. You know, we've lost some real gems in Vegas over the last several years. We've lost Jubilee um, and a number of other real production shows Mm -hmm. that sort of did this. And this is sort of the new look. And you do a lot of sort of unknown numbers from Broadway musicals. And that's what's interesting for most people who haven't heard certain numbers from shows. They're still show-stopping numbers that you might not have remembered when you saw the Broadway production of a show. Yeah, and that's what's so great about the show is that, you know, he does, you know, Sunday Clothes from Hello, Dolly, Mm -hmm. which is a gorgeous number but a lot of people especially of our generation may not yeah. be aware of that show because right. when they came into it it was Les Mis it was you know yeah, Phantom Wicked and, uh, Phantom Wicked, yeah. you know they're they're more into those shows so it's really nice to kick back to those older shows that are really really beautiful and special yeah. and he he picked some really specific numbers that he enjoys and they're just gorgeous mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So it's nice. And when you, so the cast is how many people in the show? I mean, it's a pretty extensive cast. Oh gosh. There are six singers. Yeah. Um, and there are a ton of dancers. Yeah. I couldn't give an exact number, yeah. but wow. lots and they're all incredible. And you have matching un, um, musicians as well. You're on stage with Full an enormous orchestra. Yeah. That Which is just awesome. You don't see often. I mean, I saw, I have I saw show Star Wars when it first opened, but I haven't seen it recently. We have to come back and see you. Oh yeah. You have to come. Oh, We've made we'd a lot of changes. It. We'd love it. We, um, we saw the Sinatra show they did there for oh, the, the tape show. They had talk there. about Lady Gaga on that show. Yes. I mean, we got to see her redo, I think twice for, for camera. She um, just kills. I put it three fingers. I said twice that That's okay. obviously <laughs> this crack and got to me. I don't know. It's a lot. It's a lot going on here. Um, mm-hmm. yeah. she, <laughs> she's a pro. I mean, from what, um, the people who got to work with her that yeah. day, they said she rehearsed that backstage yeah. over and of just such a perfectionist yeah, and lovely and professional and just so respectful to everybody. Just a real lady. So she can do anything. She I really that's can. That's how it is. I mean, she recreated this whole stage setup of the song. Mm-hmm. And then that was the orchestra from Showstoppers that yes. did the entire show, too. And our dancers, yeah. too. Yeah. Oh, it was amazing. Yeah. It was amazing. Speaking of a girl that can do everything, though, too. So we're backtracking because we start with Showstoppers. That's your most current. Mm-hmm. You're also in Zombie Burlesque as well here I on the I swing strip. that show, too. Yeah. She swings a lot in this yeah. city. Woo-hoo. That's why you moved here. Yeah. Uh huh. That's true. I wanted to get sassy. Yeah, you are. So what happens in Zombie Burlesque? I've not seen the show yet. What? No, I haven't. We, uh, we, have you seen it? Has anyone out there? No zombie, one's seen it. We, well, obviously we're going to take an outing here. Before we I did it. Zombie, it was one of my favorite shows. Yeah, it's yeah. It's absolutely hysterically mm-hmm. just wrong and raunchy and sassy. Oh, and it God. really kicks back to that old like old cinema, mm-hmm. nasty drama. It's just hysterical. There, yeah, there we go. Wow. Oh, and there that's Laura Kelsey. That's my Red Queen that and uh, awesome. Alice. But yeah, it's just, it's absolutely fantastic. And it's a really great group of people. And uh, Tiger Martina Mm -hmm. is the director choreographer and he's just so magical. It's just a really fun, sassy, like everything that could be just completely crazy happens Mm -hmm. in the show. And uh, Enoch Augusta Scott is the the host of the show and he is absolutely fantastic in the show. He's like an MC? Yes. Yeah, he's part of the show in that sense. He's the ringleader of the chaos. Okay, got it. Also has a live band. The ringleader of the chaos. He is. It's just a fantastic show. That's a good thing to put on a business card. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I should tell him that. Uh I think that's really good. Knowing him, he'd be like, I'm putting that down. Right, right. It's all about how you manage it. Yes. So with this show, show, how different was this kind of audition process than Showstoppers? What did you have to do for Zombie Burlesque? This one I actually sang for the team in a conference room, which was very awkward, but... (laughs) We made it happen. And then uh, they taught me some dance combos and we were good to go. And we just started working right away. Wow. So I understudied the vocalist in that. And it's 
it's a really fun show. It's a small cast. It's a uber talented group and a, a very happy dressing room, I have yeah. to say. Oh, yeah. Everybody just squeezes blood on each other. Is that how it kind works? Of, we have a blood Open table. It. Oh, you do? Literally. Oh my gosh. When I came in, they were like, here's, you know, where you get ready. And they were like, and here's the blood table. So, you know, figure <laughs> out what kind of wound you want. I was like, I'm in heaven. This is hysterical. Yes. Oh, my. I'm feeling like we need to do a little backstage on your show sometime. Oh, you have to bring it's, a camera back there and go to the blood room. What? Yeah, yeah. I think it's this, yeah. just. The I best. think Andy's over there. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Blood room, blood room, blood room. I might pass out, but we'll I do mean, the blood room. Yeah. Even if it doesn't look real, I might get sick. It's okay. It's I'm like a saying. really nice gel. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. That sounds nice. I think all my little hairs just stood up on my neck, <laughs> He's but okay. Like, Ooh. <sighs> and then even one more show she's in. Yeah. You are also in fantasy at the Luxor. I swing there as well. Oh yes. my gosh. And there's a lot of girls you're swinging with at Fantasy. Hey, mm-hmm. gorgeous girls. That show has had a lot of standing power. That's been there for 16 pro- years. Yeah, I was going to say, it's probably been over 15, 16 years because it yeah. was there. So I worked at Blue Man Group mm-hmm. when it first opened the Luxor and Fantasy was about the same time. Yeah. So it was that 16 years ago. Yeah. That's amazing. It and it's still in the well, same theater back there. It's a well-oiled machine yeah, over there. Yeah, yeah, Absolutely. So tell me about that show. Tell me how, how, how oh, there we go. Yay. Yes, we can Aww. show that on TV here. Look yep. at the girls. There's Mariah and They're Danielle. so fancy. Those are the sweetest girls. It's funny. Honestly, I I was a little intimidated because mm-hmm. you just don't know what to expect. Yeah. And that is the nicest dressing room. Those girls are so sweet. I came in kind of expecting everyone to be kind of divish. And they're mm-hmm. all the sweetest little things. And yeah. they just talk about, it's, very, it's so fun and girly. Everyone yeah. just talks about boys and makeup and what oh, they boy. did that day. No, it's just no. fun. We're not going backstage but, there. I think we cameras. I think cameras well, are not allowed. Cameras in there. are not yeah, allowed. Sorry, but uh, it's just a nice group. And yeah, that show. I actually went to the theater for the audition, mm-hmm. and uh, you had to sing a song on stage on mic, and I sang. And they called me that day to come in and swing. So I learned the show. I had the the dance captain is incredible, and she taught me the show pretty quickly. And then that one's it's a really good challenge because you're not just the singer in the show; you're mm-hmm. also hosting. Mm-hmm. So it's a really good uh, lesson on really gauging your audience. Mm-hmm where their energy's at, you know, kind of getting them to feel comfortable to hoot and holler because, you know, some people, they, they don't know if they're allowed to be loud mm-hmm, kind of thing. Mm-hmm, so it's right. really gauging the audience and keeping them alive and with you the whole time. Gotcha. You know? And this probably all this audition process mm-hmm. and all of this, all of these shows that you're in definitely prep you to create your own entity. Definitely. And I think, you know, if you, if you go get a chance to see Alice, which plays monthly right now at Brooklyn yes. Bowl. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It just, it just, it was just last week. Yes. Yeah. Um, it's an amazing oh, production. There's oh. our music. Yeah. We're around. There's oh, Ashley there Fuller. There's our Cheshire Cat Jeffrey. Oh my gosh. And the That's lighting our, is amazing. Our the show. white rabbit, Aldolfo yep. Brito. He also does our makeup and Jeffrey the cat also does our costuming. And uh, my costume has been custom made by Sandra Huntsman as yeah. well. Yeah, you're costuming the steampunk sort yes. of tradition here you're, go, you're going off of. Well, when I was writing the show, um, I was doing a lot of research on Lewis Carroll, mm-hmm. and he had very strong opinions about Victorian England. And so that really informed how I costumed it. So mm-hmm. I used a steampunk neo-Victorian style yeah. to kind of pay tribute uh, to his almost dislike of, of that Victorian, uh, what's the word, kind of arrogance that he really had an issue with. So by using the steampunk neo-Victorian, it's kind of like a twisted version of maybe what his world would have been. And what you're hearing over is one of my very favorite songs. I remember when you told me this was in the show, was Pure Imagination from Willy Wonka in that sort of very dark way that it would be. Yeah, all of our music is rearranged to not be like the original. Yeah. So when I was pulling music for the show, I actually looked for lyrics first that really spoke to what we were trying to express. Yeah. And then... uh, we constructed a rearrangement of them to be a little bit different. So people recognize the tune, but it's also that intriguing, like, oh, this mm-hmm. is different. Which is, you know, in essence, what Alice in Wonderland is all about. Right. Taking the familiar and making it curious. And that's the top of show, is that song. That's the very first song, almost, in the well, show? Well, we've actually, we've changed the show quite a bit. Okay. Our opening number now is Time in a Bottle. Okay. Nice. Uh, so, because one of the things that Lewis Carroll, you know, and one of the most familiar things yeah. is, oh, there's the hookah. Oh, my love it. Look at your face. She's so intense. You this show to literally women. I mean it, it it wraps you in. I mean we saw the show at Vinyl. Yeah, oh which, gosh. Which was a very so intimate space, now, yeah. but I mean you really 
you really pulled us in for the entire time of the show. I mean, it yeah. literally, you know, you don't know what to expect. You don't know how that story you're going to play out because you do that. You do sort of a change in the way the story is told. Yeah. In our in our version, um, Alice has come down the rabbit hole every day mm-hmm. and they meet their her looking glass self, Isila, which is Alice backwards. Yeah. And uh, these creatures of Wonderland, they seduce her and get her to smoke the hookah and her hair ribbon is red and they carry around this lantern. There's Laura Kelsey. Oh, I love it. And um, the, all the hair bows of all the Alice's they've killed light this lantern and uh, they go to kill this one and she somehow survives and chaos ensues. So all these characters, Eric, Michael Morgan, uh-huh. he yep. um, is the white knight, which was actually written as a, um, a version of Lewis Carroll when he was writing looking glass. He was a very uh, socially awkward man and the white knight is, is really him yeah in the book and all he wanted to be was a hero and that's what the white knight is but he's also awkward he can't walk straight and he's got all these teacups attached to his horse and it's kind of a hot mess and that's how he felt about himself he was a very peculiar man so when we've continued to write the the show i always pull from um biographically from lewis carroll Mm -hmm. as much as i can and even his other poetry he wrote a lot of uh cabarets and Mm -hmm. marionette shows and a lot of other things so but yeah it's a great cast so I think for everyone watching and, and, and knowing about this and creating your own show, mm-hmm. how did it come about for you to even think about this show? What, what was the inspirational point for you realizing that this would be something? I mean, looking at this, this is a product of several years you've been working on the show years, and bringing yeah. it to different venues and to now put it in a place where you have aerialists, you have the opportunity to create a, your own sort of vibe in the space. And, and Brooklyn Bowl, if you've been, I mean, oh, it's, it's so tall that you have the upstairs area. So you mm-hmm. have that you can create this environment where everybody who comes is sort yeah. of brought into what you're doing. Well, when I started to write the show, um, I started out originally starting with a, I was going to do a girl group and it just wasn't really working out. And then I was like, well, maybe I'll just try something totally different. And when I did my master's degree in England, it's in show creation. Mm-hmm. So I was like, you know, I've never been able to use my master's. And maybe this is the time. It's such a great city yeah. where they're very open to, to new product. So I started one day I was home alone and I was like, you know, I've always loved Alice in Wonderland. That was the first book I ever read. Yeah. And um, I was, I'm an insomniac still, but it was really bad when I was a kid. And so my parents bought me Alice in Wonderland on tape and yeah. I would fall asleep to it every night to help me fall asleep. Wow. So I knew the story very well. So I, and my mom randomly did uh, an essay on Lewis Carroll for her masters. So I had all this information. I was like, you know, maybe I'll just start kind of creating. So I started writing the show and I was working with Ryan Kelsey at pinup mm-hmm. at the time. And he was kind of like, what are you doing? And I started to show him my work and he was like, wow, I would really love to get in on this with you. Yeah. And so that's how he and I started to work together. So what I would do is I would kind of write where we were going and then he would start building the choreography. But honestly, as we've gone along, it's become very, you know, very much a group effort. You know, Mm -hmm. I've always wanted to, there's so many talented people here and these, these dancers that, you know, we, we handpicked all of these people because Mm -hmm. they, there's so much, there's so much to give there and they're incredible actors incredible actors and Ashley Fuller our vocalist has an incredible voice but she's also an incredible actress and that's the thing that makes the show work is that you know they all it's not just the choreography it's and that show kills us like we we joke about the Alice hangover uh-huh. so the next day we're all <laughs> how just many like, days does it last oh god three days at least we're all just dead physically yeah. because it is so much emotionally that you have to give physically mm-hmm. especially when we added the aerial work mm-hmm. so we all started training in in that which you know is pretty extensive and very physical and yeah. you know you it, do so much without words in that sense you sing yes. but you do so much in the choreography that spells it out for people in which a is way. what i wanted yeah. i didn't want to have to spoon for the right. audience too much mm-hmm. i didn't want to be too ambiguous so that's the challenges mm-hmm. and what we've done especially at brooklyn bowl is that we've kind of narrowed it down more and more and more to really explain the story through voiceover music so we start with time in a bottle and uh, into pure imagination. And then we yeah. go into Bjork's Army of May yeah. to kind of wow. explain Ashley's character. And that's a song I've been wanting to add to the show for a while. But, you know, with a- Ashley's vocal prowess, I knew like she could. So I gave it to her and I just went, you know what? Write whatever you want to write vocally. Just go for it. Cause she's an incredible musician. And she wrote out this ridiculous vocal line and just kills it. So, so I love, okay. So you, you, sir, you first did the show at what venue? The first Where time did we did play? it was at Tuscany Casino. Okay. Uh, Brett Hears, who owns mm-hmm. the Tuscany, yeah. is such a nice man, and he's very supportive of live music. Yeah. So he saw what we were doing and was like, "Hey, come do it at my casino for you know just have the yeah, room. Workshop it there. Just workshop yeah. it." And yeah. we, you know, 
practice. And of course, we were practicing until three, two or three in the morning because we all worked. Yeah, you all and, have uh, other gigs. Claudia, our caterpillar, she bought mirrors at Walmart and put them in her garage mm-hmm. and we rehearsed in her garage. Like it was just kind of making it happen. And uh, it was a really magical thing. And then after that, he extended to, for us to stay and paid us to do the show. That's so we were there and then we did uh, Club Madrid. And then we were offered uh, Hard Rock at mm-hmm, Vinyl, mm-hmm. which we loved. And then while we were at Vinyl, Brooklyn Bowl approached us. And that's when I was like, yes, I can finally put the aerial work in. And yeah, there's so yeah. much more I want to do. But Ryan and I really let the space inform what we do. Yeah. So what we'll do is we'll get the space. He and I kind of go in and make a battle plan of how we want to block. And then we block according to the space. Yeah. So once we got Brooklyn Bowl, we could really go further with the actual story, which is what I wanted to do. Right. And then we added more music to that. Yeah. So yeah, it's been. Yeah, we're proud exciting. of the work you did. I mean, this Thanks. is this is honestly, you can say it's a Vegas uh, original that it was mm-hmm. that was born and bred mm-hmm. here in Vegas, and it's a Vegas specific show. Oh, look, look uh, at I Laura. think everybody out here wants to see it. So, well, let us know when mm-hmm. is the next one we can all go see. May seventeenth. May seventeenth. Yes, and we have a. It's going. Everyone's. We going. have a ten o'clock pre-show. Yeah. Which. Um, all these different artists from Cirque and shows all over, they donate their time. And what I do is I give them a character from the book and uh-huh. a song, and then they create an original piece. <sighs> so you can still get up and get drinks and do your thing, but yeah. there's this artist doing an incredible piece. So we do that from around 10 until 1045. Yeah. Just so, so people can kind of get in the mood. Yeah. So the door opens, you smoke your hookah by, yeah. by way of the uh, performers in the room. Yes. And, and then you, you, then you, you jump to the Alice. rabbit hole with you. Yeah. Oh, we have a live it. band oh. and yeah. These incredible people. It's just a, Look it's a that. really it's great, just, really it's, great It's group. so beautiful. See, now I have a funny hookah story for you. So yeah. that, that hookah, my husband bought that in Turkey years ago. And uh, I wanted to use that hookah. And he was like, I don't know. It was, it's very heavy. <laughs> and he was like, this is a really nice hookah. Let's just go buy one. And we can just use that for now. So this yeah. is our first show. I'm like, yeah. okay. So we go to like a hookah <laughs> store. We buy this hookah. And of course, it's very light, very thin glass. We do the show. Everything's great. And so now... It was really cold that mm-hmm. night. It was like in November. And of course, it's really hot in the room. It's like we were packing in over 300 people in this yeah, tiny room. Yeah. So I'm holding the hookah, which, you know, has like water in it. And mm-hmm. we got like, you know, flavored tobacco. So it wouldn't be harsh on everybody. And I'm holding it. And he's like, I'll be right back. I'm just going to go get the container for it and we'll put it away. I'm like, sure. So he goes away. I'm holding it and I'm outside. Mm-hmm. Well, the cold hit the hookah. This thing exploded. Oh, my gosh. Like the glass. It just went. Ah, yeah, blew up all over me oh. and I couldn't move because I was covered in very thin glass. So my husband comes back. He's like, oh, my God, what happened to you? Because I'm soaking wet <laughs> in hookah juice and glass. <laughs> and I'm like, and with all my Alice makeup is like dripping yeah. down my face and there's glass all over me. He was like, don't move. Oh, my God. <laughs> And this poor like lady who worked there, she's like, adios mio, and like running and like getting paper towels and just trying to clean me up. I was like, this is awesome. <laughs> like after this great show and I'm covered in hookah juice. So after that, I got him to use the actual hookah yes. and all the leather armor he builds wow. uh, for around that. So yeah. And no you said, more. let's use the good stuff. I was like, mm-hmm. we got to use the real hookah, yeah. honey. We can't use the cheap one because yeah. obviously it blew up on me. Do you know our teacups came from Belgium? These are real. Oh, look at that. These are the real thing. These are really bougie. Are, yeah, they are. And we hardly use them at home. That's well, why we I brought them put today. I this in the dishwasher. Yeah, no, you don't. Gotta polish yeah. This. These are polished. You can see it's a little bit tarnished, but that's okay. This is really cute. Yeah, isn't it pretty? It actually came from Belgium. I, I bought it at uh, a yard sale this lady was selling, and she was what? from Belgium. And these were all her pieces, so... You yeah. know, I bought these really gorgeous wine glasses from a yard sale yeah. and they, they're, I found out later, I got them, looked at their price list, yeah. and I bought them for 20 bucks. See? I'm not going to tell her, though. No. <laughs> She doesn't need to know. But you need to use the good stuff. They're really bougie. That's, yeah, yeah. I like them. Yeah. You'll bring them on next time we have you over here. Oh, should yeah, we'll I? Have, yeah, we'll have some They're champagne. like vampire goblets. Oh, I like it. They're like red glass and they're very heavy. <laughs> we can pour um, gel-like blood inside them and drink out of them. And then you'll barf because you don't like Oh, no. Blood. Yeah. Well, um, okay. So, I know. Segue into that. Um, so... <laughs> You have you have been a part of our House Seats shows since we started our House Seats Presents, the set list. And now we're in volume two. Uh, oh, so yeah, cool. there we go. Okay, it's on the site now on Back so to Black. Awesome. Um, you can also go straight to Brooklyn Bowl site. Tickets are $15. Pre sale, $20 at the door. It's going to be $30 such a good VIP. Night. Um, it is Amy Winehouse Back to Black. Such a great album. And that is the set list, volume two. Because you have been in our first set list, <sighs> uh, our very first set list show. Which I'm still just... It's still reeling over. So this was the Alanis Morissette's Jagged Little Pill. We premiered it at Vinyl. 
Yes. And it was like the you three girls rock. You, Sean and Nikki, just I mean, literally oh killed the show. Well, first of all, those two girls are just so ridiculously talented. And on Rocky Brown did a special. Mm-hmm. That That's night, right. Who yeah, I she love. did on course. It was just the coolest group of girls. It's just you know, it's a rare it's a rare time you could just get these people together who are so magical. But it was like I was in a room of unicorns. It was mm-hmm. just ridiculous. <laughs> They were all, they're all so amazing and so humble and sweet. And I think you live your life in Alice in Wonderland right here at Unicorn. I mean, I love it. This is I like, mean, this is like heaven to me right now. If life could be one big anime, I'd yeah. be happy. Yeah. It is. I mean, I think, you know? I think Alice through the looking glass is coming out pretty soon. It is. Yeah. It looks really cute. Yeah. I, I'm loving this idea that you bring people together. Cause when, mm-hmm. when Andy joined uh, house seats, that's what he wanted to do is bring everybody together. And we want to keep, you know, what, what are the biggest reasons that we do produce the shows and you're producing Alice is you want to keep the talent pool in Vegas. Mm-hmm. Everyone we've talked to since we started the show from Tina Walsh to oh, she's so Reva amazing. Rice and everyone oh, yes. in between who said, I never meant to be here but I love it here. Yeah. And we want to keep that talent pool employed and, and enjoying their time in Vegas. And then everybody who lives here actually wants to see this kind of stuff happen. Yeah. I mean, I remember my cousin Rachel's out in the audience over there and her, her mom took me to New York when I was, I think I was 12 or 13 years old. And I was singing in a choir at the time and we, and we sang, but she took us to Broadway. Oh. Um, she took us, we took, she took us to Phantom of the Opera in LA when we were kids. I think that was the first I think that's the first Broadway show I ever saw oh, was, was Phantom of the Opera. And and sort of and we, we didn't have that yet in Vegas. We didn't have all those traveling shows. We didn't have theaters to put them on. We had amazing shows here. Mm-hmm. But when you're a kid, we weren't really allowed to see Jubilee or any of those numbers. Well, yeah, they're um, racy. It's, well, they you had know, boobies, you, you know, know. And two eggs, sunny side. I wasn't up. allowed to see boobies. That no. really worked out, Mom. Yeah. Um so you know <laughs> sorry. Sorry. If you're watching, I'm so sorry, Mom. I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> and there is nothing wrong with boobs. There is nothing. They're there great. Is absolutely, but I mean, the the beauty of those shows, mm-hmm. you know, we didn't really get hi. There he goes. He loves boobs. Hey. hey. It's a different kind of, of theater and, and beauty. And that's yeah. the thing, it, you know, for kids, like I, I my first show was uh, that I saw on Broadway was Miss Saigon. Mm-hmm. And like to this day, I mean, you know how you feel when you're young yeah. and you see a show and you're just like, yeah. oh, my God. You, and that's what you want to create and be a part of, right. you know, in this business is you want people to walk away and just be like, wow, that was really a magical experience. You want them to forget their phone, to right. forget yeah. their life just for that 85 mm-hmm. minutes. Yep. And when you see a show like Phantom, when you're a kid and you, you just, you're completely sucked into that world, it's such an incredible experience. And yeah. that's why we do what we do. You know, we've all experienced that feeling. We want to give it. And so. when you saw Miss Saigon and then you were actually in the show. Mm-hmm. What was that like for you to now be able to sing the numbers that you oh, it was, saw in that time? It was incredible. When I saw yeah. the show, you know, I was 15. You don't you yeah. don't get it. You get as much as you can. But then when I was actually a part of the show, and they make you do an extensive lot of research when you are cast. Yeah. And to really delve into that world. And my cast, they had been doing it for years. Yeah. So I was kind of the newbie. It was a very intense experience. I've done that show twice as Ellen. And it was, it's... It's a lot. It's a lot to take in. It's a very somber show. Mm-hmm. It's definitely yeah, right. when the show's over and no one yeah, goes no out and parties. Is, right. no Everyone's like, like oh. well, good night <laughs> with myself. Like, you know, it's it's an intense it's an intense show. So it's it was an incredible experience. Yeah. I'm so grateful for that. And that's that's what's so wonderful about, you know, the shows out here is they're giving the performers out here a chance to to perform and do some incredible shows. Cause out here, you know, we we're it's very transient. Yeah. So yeah. we're trying to get that entertainment. Well, we're gonna to the keep people. you here. We're going to oh, keep I'm not you here. Going anywhere. The immersive and always fabulous Anne Martinez. You can see her, and we're going to line it out. Showstoppers mm-hmm. at Win. You can see her in Fantasy. You can see her in Zombie Burlesque. And you will see her April 28th doing Amy Winehouse Back to Black at Brooklyn Bowl with all of us crazies at House Seats. So can't wait. Thank you for coming on the show. Thank you for I having really me. appreciate it. it was uh, so wonderful. We're going to go down the rabbit hole for after show now and have a little bit of cracking rum. So Ooh. cheers to you, Anne. And you. And for our audience today, thank you so much for being here. Yes. We'll thank see you, you next seats. Monday. Oh, you're welcome. Happy House Seats. Bye, yes. everybody.